This is video TR-33Z, where I'll illustrate a geometric interpretation of all the trig functions on a unit circle. Z videos cover supplemental material that probably isn't mandatory for a trig class, but might be interesting or enlightening. This one, I think, is particularly interesting. To keep the diagram large, but still general, I'll focus on a unit circle in quadrant 1, with this angle in standard position. The coordinates of the angle's point on the unit circle are cosine theta, comma, sine theta, which means the blue length is cosine theta and the red length is sine theta. I'll draw the blue cosine line up here to keep it out of the way when we draw the secant line in a few minutes. It's the same length no matter where we draw it. Let's draw a line through the angle's point tangent to the circle. This line is perpendicular to the yellow terminal side of angle theta. This segment between the angle's point and the x-axis I'll color brown, or tan, since this is the tangent of theta. But you don't have to believe me, I'll prove it using properties of similar triangles. Let's consider this triangle and flip it around. Its sides are color-coded to cosine and sine of theta and 1. Now let's consider this larger triangle. Two of its sides are 1 and are candidate for tan theta. These two triangles are similar because they have two congruent angles. They both have a right angle, and they both have theta. So the third angle in both triangles must be the complement of theta. We're going to use this property. Corresponding sides of similar triangles are proportional. We covered this in TR-08 if you need a review. We'll use these pairs of corresponding sides to set up the equation. Sine theta over cosine theta equals tan theta over 1. Tan theta over 1 is just tan theta, and sine theta over cosine theta is indeed the definition of tangent. So the length of the tan line is tangent theta. Let me flip this large triangle over and realign it, and you'll see another graphical depiction of tan theta. It's the length of the vertical line segment tangent to the circle from the x-axis to the point where this vertical tangent intersects the terminal side of angle theta. It's much easier to see than describe, but as it's clearly constructed from the same triangle, you can see these tan lines are the same length, which is the magnitude of tangent theta. So you might see diagrams with the tangent shown vertical like this. It's not more or less correct, it's just orienting the triangle differently. Each of the remaining three trig functions also has more than one geometric interpretation on the unit circle, but I'm going to show you the one I think is clearest without further elaboration about the others. So, now let's consider this green segment. Its length corresponds to cotangent theta. We'll take this triangle with the cosine sine triangle and apply the same property of similar triangles. By carefully choosing the sides we compare to help isolate cotangent, we get the equation cosine theta over sine theta equals cotangent theta over 1. So cotangent theta equals cosine over sine, the reciprocal of tangent, which is indeed the cotangent. So we have graphical depictions of cosine, sine, tangent, and cotangent. Two more to go. The purple length down on the x-axis corresponds to the secant. Here are our triangles. And as usual, we choose the trig function over 1 and the corresponding sides on the other triangle. In this case, 1 over cosine, which equals secant. Finally, this pink segment along the y-axis has a length corresponding to cosecant. The similar triangle ratios are 1 over sine, which is cosecant. So there are all six trig functions represented graphically on a unit circle. I want to point out something else that's pretty interesting. We've already seen that we have a unit circle triangle corresponding to the first Pythagorean identity, the most important equation in trigonometry, cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta equals 1. But there are lots of right triangles on this diagram. Let's take a look at this one. It corresponds to the second Pythagorean identity, 1 plus cotangent squared theta equals cosecant squared theta, which we get by dividing the first identity by cosine squared theta. And this triangle corresponds to tangent squared theta plus 1 equals secant squared theta. 
the last Pythagorean identity, which is the first divided by sine squared theta. And there are more triangles, though their equations are not as well discussed as the first three. For example, let's look at this big triangle. Did you know that cosecant squared theta plus secant squared theta equals cotangent theta plus tan theta quantity squared? I didn't either until I drew this diagram. I'm not saying this is an equation you need to memorize. To be honest, there's not much intrigue to memorize. But it's interesting to know that equations like this are right here graphically in this construction. How about this triangle? It might be a little tricky because the horizontal length at the bottom isn't exactly secant theta. It's secant theta minus this distance, which is cosine theta. So, secant theta minus cosine theta, quantity squared, plus sine squared theta equals tan squared theta. And for this last triangle, the vertical distance is the pink cosecant minus the red line. So, cosecant theta minus sine theta, quantity squared, plus cosine squared theta, equals cotangent squared theta. Here's an animation showing these color-coded segments as angle theta progresses around the circle. I think it's kind of mesmerizing, especially when you consider the graphs of these functions. Can you see how sine and cosine oscillate back and forth between negative 1 and 1? The relationship between sine and secant? How they just touch at the quadrantal angles? Same with cosine and cosecant. Can you see how tangent is always increasing and cotangent is always decreasing? Can you see how they suddenly jump when they change quadrants, just like their graphs? If you can play this movie in your head, or at least see the relationships between these functions for different angle sizes, I think you'll have an easier time with some topics that other students struggle with. I'm going to create an extra video with just this cycle playing over and over. I'll call it TR-33A, and we'll see if anyone watches it.